Hello, my name is Ronnie, and I'm so glad that you could join us again today on Hope Faith TV. We'll be continuing from where we left off on the message, don't take your own life. Why? Because God, our Heavenly Father, cares about you. Before we open God's word, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you care about us. And I thank you for your word that gives us hope. And I pray that today for everyone who is listening and everyone who is watching, that they will come to the realization of how much you care about them. I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So in our last episode, we discovered through God's word that he cares for us, that he knows us, that even when we are far from him, when we find ourselves in a situation, that the only solution to our problems, to our pains, to our hearts, is to take our own life. We are reminded in God's word that that's not God's plan and purpose for us. And we are reminded over and over again through the person of Jesus Christ that God cares about you. He cares about you. And he's seeking every day, every day to draw you and I to himself, to reveal himself. So today, let's turn our Bibles to Psalm chapter 8, and we're going to read verses 4 and 5. We're going to park ourselves on those two verses today. It reads, What are mere mortals that you think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than angels and crowned them with glory and honor. Amen. So in verses 1 to uh, 4, David is looking at God's creation. And he's comparing God's creation to who he is as one who is serving, who is seeking for God. And in verse 4, inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Word of God tells us that what are mere mortals that you should think about them? So here we see that God is thinking about us. God is thinking about you. The creator of heavens, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who created the lakes and the oceans and the stars. You know, he talks about the stars when you look up and you gaze in the stars and you look at the moon. You know, these are, amazing things that God has created. But God thinks more about you than even the things and the vast and the majestic things that we see each and every day revealed in his nature. So that really shows to know that the God who created this earth thinks about you and me. And the next part of this verse says, human beings, that you should care for them. So God thinks about you and me. And then on top of that, he cares for us. And even though you find yourself in life, you think that nobody's thinking about you, that nobody cares about you. You can look at just the creation on the stars and be reminded 
that God thinks about you, that God cares about you. He cares about your life. Now, when we read verse 5, it says, Yet you made them only a little lower than the angels, and you crowned them with glory and honor. So, what does it mean when we read here that he has crowned them with glory and honor? We are just a little lower than the angels. It shows that God has given us significance, purpose, and honor above everything that he has created. You know, he created the angels. He created the oceans and the mountains. And, you know, now it's, you know, some over here. And sometimes you, I'm just amazed that when you look at creation in itself, how God took the time with his amazing and infinite wisdom. But all that is nothing compared to the significance and the honor and the glory that he has bestowed upon you and I. That's how much God thinks and cares about us. Amen? So I hope that really encourages you that God wants to crown you not with shame, not with guilt. No. God wants to crown you with glory, with honor, with significance, with purpose because he thinks and cares about you. And you know, when we think about even creation, you know, when God was creating the mountains, he was creating the fish of the sea, he was creating, um, you know, the sun and the moon and the stars, none of that and all those things that he created were never made in his own image. We read in Genesis that God said, let us make man in our own image. God has created you and I in his own image. Outside of everything that we see, God has created you and I in his own image. And that really shows the significance and the value that he puts on you and every human being that is born in this world. So, remember that. Another wonderful scripture that I would like us to open today comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30 and verse 17. Jeremiah, chapter 30 and verse 17. And this is a very good and encouraging verse. It reads, I will give you back your health and heal your wounds, says the Lord. For you were called an outcast. Jerusalem, for whom no one cares. So what's happening here? Let's uh, get a brief uh, summary of this book of Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah was a young man in his 20s, and uh, he was called by God to prophesy to the people of Judah because they were primarily living as islands, you know, and to themselves. They were disregarding his ways. They were disobeying his commandments. And uh, this was really putting them in increasing danger that resulted from their disobedience. 
So God is using this young man, Jeremiah. And you see, we read, we read verse 17. But in, verse, in the whole chapter, uh, God is reminding them of the ways that they have lived their lives. And sometimes because of our actions, there are consequences. You know, when we stray away from God, there are consequences to that. But because of God's mercy and his grace, even when we stray away, he's a voice that is crying out in the wilderness, just like John the Baptist, bringing us closer to himself, bringing us closer through his son, Jesus Christ. And so we see here that God promises through Jeremiah that his people will know him directly, that his people who are suffering, that his people who have walked away from him can come through the person of his son, Jesus Christ, to know that he cares and thinks about them. So what was going on here? God is telling the people of Judah, I will give you back your health. Now the Amplified says, I will restore health to you. God cares about your health. He cares about your health. He cares about your mental health. Maybe you're going through a mental health crisis and you're saying, God, restore my mental health. Maybe you're going through a physical challenge. Maybe you're going through a sickness that has been diagnosed in your body. And you're saying, God, restore my health. Restore my health. I don't know how to live through this pain every day. I don't know, God, how I'm going to live with this sickness every day. God wants to restore you. He wants to restore your health back. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you peace. Maybe you're going through some trauma. Maybe and you're carrying these injuries that is even affecting your health. You may be healthy on the outside, but inside you're not, you're not healthy spiritually, Emotionally, you're not healthy. God wants to restore that too. And we continue to read, it says, and heal your wounds. Oh, you know what? Throughout life, we all have wounds. Wounds reveal pain. Pain that could come from all kinds of sources. Pain could come from family, from maybe the way you're brought up. Pain could come from your workplace. Pain could come because of those who are close to you. Pain could have been inflicted by the community and society. And so some of these wounds that we carry that are as a result of the pain that we have experienced God is saying that, my daughter, my son, I want to heal those wounds. God says, he wants to come and heal you. You know, sometimes in life, even when we are carrying those wounds, all it's going to take is for an event or something or someone to say something that will poke those wounds. And sometimes, you know, when you poke someone's wounds, it hurts. It hurts. So maybe circumstances and people have poked your wounds and you're carrying this pain that maybe you think that nobody cares about your wounds. But God here is saying again, is giving us hope, saying I will not only restore your health, I will not only give you back your health, 
but I will also heal, bring healing to your wounds. He is the great physician who can deal with both your external and internal wounds. But you see, we, we have a God who understands. And when we read the next section, he says, because they have called you an outcast. You know, sometimes when we come to the end, we think that taking our own life is the only way to relieve the pain because of how we have been labeled. And here we see that even God was aware that they had labeled the people of Judah as an outcast. Maybe you think that you're an outcast. Maybe people have labeled you as an outcast. They have said, oh, you're just a good for nothing person. Oh, you're just a failure. Oh, you just have no purpose on this earth. You don't even deserve to be alive. Do not allow the lies of society to influence your life. Don't do that. Do not allow the voices of Satan. Satan is our enemy. And he speaks these lies on our lives. He speaks because his aim, remember as we discovered, is to kill, to steal, and to destroy your life. But because of our Father, through Jesus Christ, he has come that we might have life to the full, till it overflows. That is the purpose. That's the purpose that God has for your life. So even though you have been called all these names, you have been labeled all these names. God is saying here that he understands. He understands. And even he says, in the last part of that verse, he says, Jerusalem, maybe you can put your name there. Sometimes I've had to put my name there. Ronnie, for whom no one cares. Ah, God, you're aware of that. You are aware of what I'm going through. Oh, I'm so grateful that we have a God who understands. I'm so grateful that I have a God who knows that even with all that have been labeled with, called. When I think that no one cares, God actually knows those details. That's the God we serve. And so we continue to read in Jeremiah chapter 30 from verse 18 to verse 20. Let's see now what is God's promise for you when you find yourself, when you find yourself with no hope saying that, Ronnie, I want to take my own life. Hear God's plan for you. He says, this is what the Lord says. When I bring Israel home again from captivity and restore their fortunes, Jerusalem will be rebuilt on its ruins and the palace reconstructed as before. So we see God's plan for you. When you find yourself thinking that no one cares, when you find yourself thinking that you're an outcast in society, God is saying he wants to bring you home again. Oh, what a loving father. He wants to bring us close to himself. He wants, you know, home is the place where he wants to say, hey, my, my son, my daughter, come home. Come home to me. Come home again. He says again. You know, you may be thinking that you've gone far away from God so many times. You've strayed away. You've disobeyed God. There is a reason why he's saying again. God doesn't give up on us. 
when we stray away, he says, okay, my son, your daughter, you have failed. You have failed in this area. You have maybe have done some things. You're walking with shame. He's saying, come, come to me. And he wants to bring you. This is why he says, when I bring Israel home from captivity, from that thing that is holding you, you know, you find yourself powerless and you think that taking your life is the only solution. No, God is saying, come home to me. He wants to restore you. He wants to restore your health. He wants to heal your wounds. And he says, Jerusalem will be rebuilt on its ruins. You know, I was really struck by that. He doesn't say Jerusalem will be built on something new. But God can build your life even where you are right now. Even when you think that in your state you have no hope, God is able to rebuild your life from that place where you are, that dark place where you are. God says, rebuild on its ruins. You know, when you, when you look at when buildings come down in doing construction, you may look at a building site and be like, it's just ruins. Everything has collapsed. There is, there is no hope that anything can be built here. But God says, ah, I can build something there. You may be looking at it as ruins. You may be looking at something helpless, something hopeless. But God in his power and in sovereignty and his love for you and I is able to build on those ruins. And verse 19, it says, There will be joy and songs of thanksgiving. I will multiply my people, not diminish them. I like that. I will honor them, not despise them. That's God's promise for you. God wants to multiply your life. He wants to give you joy and peace. He doesn't want to diminish you. Even though you may think you've been despised by society, despised by friends, despised by family, God is saying, I will not despise you. That is his word. He is the one who is saying these words through prophet Jeremiah. He's saying, my son, my daughter, I will not despise you. Don't give up. Don't give up and take your own life. Because God has not despised you. God doesn't diminish you. God loves you and he cares for you and he invites you to know him. So how does God invite us to know him? Through his son, Jesus Christ. When we look at the life of Jesus, Though we fail, God is patient with us. And that's why he revealed his love by sacrificing his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. He took all my shame. He took all your shame. Anything you can think of in the past that you don't even want to look back, it was all covered at the cross. It was all paid for at the cross. And so God invites us every day through his son, Jesus Christ. But maybe you haven't accepted Jesus Christ. And if you haven't, I would like to give an opportunity and pray today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, 
who died for me and you showed me your love because you care about me, because you think about me. I repent of my sins and I come to you, O oh Lord. Help me. Forgive me. I accept you, Lord Jesus. I accept you into my life today to be my Lord. And I thank you for dying for me and giving me hope today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome to the family. God loves you. It's a new journey. God has a great purpose for your life. And if you want to get to know more about Jesus, here at Hope Faith TV, we encourage you to read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. Remember that you are really valued by our Heavenly Father. Choose to follow Christ because He's the only one who can set you free. To know more about Jesus, we encourage you to read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Remember that we share our messages in English, French, and Swahili. Connect with us on our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and stream our videos on YouTube. You can find the links to these pages at the bottom of our website. Until next time, have a blessed day.